Hi there, Charlie Potters here once again and uh, reporting from uh, Nyan Company in Bloomfield, New Jersey on their November 17th collection of Charles S. Schultz Hoboken financier who moved to Montclair, established one of the finest homes in Montclair in 1894, built by LeBron and in there established one of the finest Victorian science libraries that a gentleman could ever want. And that's what's on uh, offer now at nine. Uh, so let me take you a little bit through this incredible library, starting with the microscopes that flank uh, Mr. Schultz on either side. You can see that on his left is a Collins binocular microscope, uh, a very much state-of-the-art piece of equipment in the 19th century. Uh, another 19th century microscope with sophisticated compound lenses. Uh, you may notice over here an entire collection of seashells that was in the library uh, inside glass cases, uh, airtight glass cases. And if I step back, we have a 19th century, what's called a spark generator, but at a time when electricity was a novelty and they were just learning about the properties of electricity, uh, to have something like this was really quite a thing, quite a thing indeed. There's a Spencer microscope, a Victorian microscopical slide collection. This is all one collection in one case, and it's got a lot of rare and unusual specimens in there because he was the president of the American Microscopical Society. We also have, in this case, a celestial globe from Boston made by Loring. And yet over here on the other side, we have a terrestrial globe made by Schirmerhorn in New York. If I come around this way, there's another interesting optical piece called a megalethoscope. And it was made in France at the end of the 19th century. And kind of like the uh, late 19th century projection, uh, projector television to be able to see the big images. You can also see that there's a single collection of Neolithic native items, a single collection of fossils. There's more of these interesting and unusual electrical supplies, whether these are uh, room cough coils, whether these are things like these early precursors to neon. They're called Geisler tubes. A 19th century telephone, believe it or not, late 19th century telephone that came right out of the house. And then if we continue along this way, there's an excellent rock and mineral collection which features not only, uh, not only large crystals, such as that or that, and large and unusual mineral specimens. That's turquoise over here. Another blue, unusual blue, uh, this is lapis. And then we also have, although you can't tell in the uh, light here, we have special lights for this. All of the minerals on this table in these trays are all fluorescent minerals from the Franklin and Sterling mines here in New Jersey, uh, which is the nation's leading source for fluorescent minerals. The top lot of the mineral collection is a piece of azurite uh, with malachite in it, which is from Bisbee, Arizona, and it's an unusual both in its size and the fact that it came from Bisbee, Arizona, but also because it was collected in the 19th century. Many of the big collections don't have any of this size that these, uh, that these types of things feature. Now, you can't get very often specimens that are as big as this. There is some decorative arts and unusual things like a small coin collection. Um, we have over here uh, some really fun literature books. Uh, unusual photography. There's a, uh, you can't see it in the, in, in the glare, but there's a good uh, carte de vist of uh, President Garfield along with Life of Garfield. We have uh, uh, everything from pottery displayed at the St. Louis Fair to Austrian cold painted bronzes to Japanese eggshell uh, work on that incense piece. We have a uh, uh, a, a South American terracotta figure, stones from the home of Buddha 
and uh, even some Chinese rock crystal and hard stone chops. The last part of the collection is this really pretty spectacular 19th century library, which includes an unparalleled selection of science books, many of them in condition that you would never find anywhere on the internet now. You can't, it's, it, they were all kept in airtight cases. But there's also an incredible selection of literature, uh, some of its history, like Life of Washington, uh, some of its um, uh, gardening. Excuse me. Books are dusty. <laughs> we have um, gardening books. We have books on astronomy. There are books, uh, great books on travel. Most of them are done by section. So there's a whole one lot of Italian books, one lot of uh, French travel, one lot of English travel. And uh, it really is an amazing collection. Even something as rare and unusual as this, which is, believe it or not, a rare Edison electric pen, the very first electrical appliance in America. Uh, and if you were to look them up now, you will find that they are rare and unusual items and they very seldom come up for auction. And right next to it, you have not one, but two pieces of the transatlantic telephone cable, which was sort of a, a, a thing that you had to have if, uh, if you wanted to be a proper gentleman to show that you were a man of your time. You had a piece of the cable as it was laid across the uh, Atlantic. And uh, so that is pretty much it. You can see that it's a broad, deep collection. It clearly reflects the mind and desires of the classic Victorian 19th century, as it were, uh, gentleman scientist. And uh, if you want, by all means, I'd say, come to Nye and Company. The auction is on November 17th. Check their website at www.nyeandcompany.com and go to the catalog and uh, come say hi to Charles Schultz and thank him for the stuff he's left behind. All proceeds will go to benefit the Montclair History Center.